Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with another deck tech for you. A dredge deck. This one I call Army of the Dredged. There's a little bit of a story behind this, so give me just one moment and I'll fill you in. I actually noticed on Gather this card, Crypt of Agadim. Enters the battlefield tapped, add black or two in tap. Add black to your mana pool for each black creature card in your graveyard. In other words, a land that gives you lots of mana and is modern legal. So obviously I wanted to try to find a way to abuse this card. Uh, since I need black creatures in the graveyard, and since most of the dredgers are black, why not just build a dredge deck? Especially now that we have Golgari Grave Troll legal and modern. So that's the first step, but this only generates black mana. So I need to find some way to abuse it. I found two, actually. Unfortunately, I can't flash back on Burial Rites because that has white mana in the flashback cost, and Dread Return is, of course, very, very banned, but I'm not flashing it back for mana anyway. And the reason that flashing it back is so necessary is because if I'm running a dredge deck, well, it's very likely to hit the graveyard. So I found two ways to abuse having lots and lots of black mana. The first one is this, Army of the Damned. It's where I get the name for the deck. Put 13 <laughs> 2 2 black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield tapped. And then flashback, instead of 5 in black black black, it's 7 in black black black. So once I have 10 mana, then I can go for it. I like to think that what happened in R&D is, you know, they said, okay, so we have it at 10, now what do we do? Let's turn it up to 11. Oh yeah? Let's turn it up to 12. Oh yeah? Let's turn it up to 13. Okay. Something like that is what I imagine they, they must have thought. And then the other one is this, Spider Spawning. Similarly, its flashback cost contains only black mana, black or colorless. It is 4 in green, put a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach onto the battlefield for each creature card in your graveyard, and flashback for 6 in black. Now, importantly, Army of the Damned has its zombies come in tapped, Spider spawning does not have its spiders come in tapped, so they can be used to block. Occasionally that one turn makes all the difference in the world. So we have our means, we have our end. What else do we have in here? Well, first of all, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of dredgers. Uh, since I already have Crypt of Agadim out, let me start with uh, the one that feels most different from the rest of them, Life from the Loam. Because it's very likely that I'll accidentally put a Crypt of Agadim in my graveyard and not have any in my hand, I need some way to get it back. And since I'm already trying to dredge a lot anyway, why not life from the loam? I see some dredge list in modern running only three lives. I like to run four because they're so integral. Uh, Crypt of Agadim is so integral to what the deck is trying to do. Um, I just feel that it's absolutely necessary to have the fourth uh, just in case. And it's a strong enough card on its own anyway. I do have fetch lands, so I will be reusing those time and again. Now for the dredgers. Oh, the fun. <laughs> Alright. Let's start off with the biggest one of all. Our other win condition, Golgari Grave Troll. Of course it's a four of. Importantly though, it is not a black creature. Which means that I will not get mana off of it with Crypt of Agadim, but even so, Dredge 6 is just way too much uh, to not include it. And it's a win condition, to be sure. There will be lots and lots and lots of creatures in here. So, in the graveyard, that is. So I am very likely to have a giant Golgari Grave Troll by the time that the game nears its end. Next, you know, go from Dredge 6 to Dredge 5, Stinkweed Imp. Flying... I don't know that it's actually been errated to actual death touch, but it functions like it, in most respects. Um, dredge 5 is what we care about. Occasionally you can use this to save yourself from dying to a goif or something as such. Blocks colonnade. Um, but what you care about is that you're getting a black creature and... Uh, you're getting a black creature in your graveyard and five other cards as well. Next, we have Golgari Thug. Dredge 4. Uh, this one feels a little bit bad if it dies. You, re you really don't want it to die. 
it is a must. You must put a uh, target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library, which does take one away from Crypt of Academe. So there is a, a cost to it, albeit not a terribly great cost. Um, even so, Dredge 4, that's what matters. Either stay in our yard, or give us more. Well, I'll take it. Next, here's an unusual one. <laughs> Don't see this all that often. Shambling Shell. Oh, that Ravnica common. It's a 3-1, so I have actually gone on a beatdown plan with it. You can see that in the video down here. Um, I have actually won a game by just going on beatdown when my graveyard was a little bit shut down. I mean, there was a relic out. It was, it was shut down. Um, sacrifice it. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. So as long as there's another creature out, that's perfectly alright. I can get this back into my graveyard for more dread shenanigans. And that's really what matters about it. It's black, uh, so it counts for Crypt of Agadim. I can dredge it, cast it, sacrifice it, dredge it, cast it, sacrifice it, and just keep looping it like that. Next we have... Let's see, we might actually want to scooch these over just a bit. Just a little bit. Maybe we can fit eight up here, which is the crucial number. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Two-Face over there. A Necroplasm. Just one up in the main board. This is a weird card. <laughs> this is certainly a weird card. Uh, beware using this one, though, because you are trying to win with tokens. Well, I'll explain. It's a 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on Necroplasm. At the end of your turn, destroy each creature with converted mana cost equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on Necroplasm. So, upside. It is main board and sideboard. Uh, hate against tokens. Just eats them. Uh, on the other hand, you cannot cast this once you have resolved your Army of the Damned or Spider Spawning. That's a little bit of a nombo. Also, Necroplasm will kill itself when it gets to 3. Uh, at the beginning of that upkeep, puts the third counter on it, and then at the end of turn, it will destroy itself because it's CMC as 3. You can get around that by having Shambling Shell throw a counter on it. And that always feels kind of nice, I would say. At that point, though, you lose the ability to have itself drop back into your graveyard, but it's also only dredging you too, so you don't care all that much about it being in, um, not being in your graveyard. It is one less black creature, but you aren't getting much out of it. Now we have four Street Wraiths. Not a dredger, but it sort of is a substitute dredger. Uh, it just gives you another way to draw without using mana, and you replace that draw with a dredge, and you get a little bit more in, and it's a black creature. All the better gives you a little bit of consistency with the deck if you don't have enough lands in your opening hand or something as such. It just increases the speed at the cost of only two life. Not that much at all. Now we have a couple utility creatures. I'm going to start off with Phantasmagorian. This one you may actually have seen before. If you've seen Oops All Spells or Manalus Dredge, I think that, it, yeah, it's Manalus Dredge. Uh, that uses Phantasmagoria, not Oops All Spells. My bad. Uh, <laughs> what you care about here is that you uh, you always want to be on the draw in that deck. You draw your card, you discard for turn Phantasmagorian. And then, <laughs> when you are about to take your turn, so end of your opponent's turn, uh, drop six cards into your graveyard with Phantasmagorian's second ability. Discard three cards, return it from your graveyard to your hand, so you discard three cards, and then once you've paid the cost and the ability is on the stack, do it again, and you have six cards in your graveyard. Ta-da! And then you start dredging away like it's no one's business. Uh, very neat little trick you can do with that. Uh, if you can manage to get it in your graveyard, it's great. Otherwise, it really doesn't do much at all. That's why it's only a one of. Great to drop with a Faithless Looting or Lightning Axe in the opening hand. Oh, by the way, I have those cards. Uh, now, for the last creature, I have one Vengeful Pharaoh. <laughs> who cares about the mana cost? Uh, Death Touch, who cares about that? What we care about is that whenever combat damage is dealt to you or a Planeswalker you control, but we don't have any Planeswalkers, 
If it's in the graveyard, destroy target attacking creature. So that Tarmogoyf giving you trouble, just kill it for no mana and put Vengeful Pharaoh back on top. That doesn't really matter, you're dredging it away anyway. And it's another black creature in the graveyard. So it's something that you can do against aggro decks. Now granted, the damage is already done by that point, uh, but it does allow you to prevent that damage later on. It really isn't all that much. You want that against the mid-range decks, for instance, that are only hitting you with, for a while, you know, the the one Tarmogoyf they have out, the one Siege Rhino, the one Tassiger. Lingering Souls makes that a bit more problematic, to be sure. Uh, and now, for the, uh, the other means, I suppose. We have two one-drop ways to get the, uh, get these cards into our graveyard. Uh, the first one is Faithless Looting. This is the one that was in the original iteration of the deck. Um, actually, it was the only one-drop in that iteration of the deck. It rather speaks for itself. Draw two, discard two. So, dredge up to twelve and then discard your dredgers. <laughs> or Phantasmagorian. Or Vengeful Pharaoh if you need to save yourself from you know, a, an aggro plan that's going on. And if you happen to dredge it away, don't worry, it has a flashback cost. You can go for it anyway. This card, I cannot sing its praises highly enough. It is a very, very good card for what we're trying to do. And next, now I used to run Dangerous Wager in this slot. Uh, Dangerous Wager is fine. It is an instant, two drop, uh, discard your hand, and then draw two. Uh, so you discard your hands, get your dredgers into the graveyard, and then draw, or, yeah, draw dredge up to 12, I should say. Um, that's nice and fine, but what you really don't like about that card, uh, it, it's really explosive. There's that. But if you're actually playing it on turn two, there's a bit of a problem. You see, this deck needs to hit three mana. Absolutely needs to. Because you need two and the crypt... Well, I, okay, three lands, I should say. Uh, you need two and then the crypt in order to go off, in order to make a bunch of mana. Uh, you can't actually do that uh, with Dangerous Wager if you're using that on turn two. Because you've just discarded your hand and you're drawing two, you don't know that you're going to get those. Now, granted, you could have two, one of which is green, and then go Life from the Loam. But if you didn't drop a Life from the Loam, or if you didn't dredge it, you're kind of in trouble for a little while. It, it adds explosiveness and takes away from the consistency of the deck. Um, and it also means that you still don't have any interaction with your opponents. That's maybe even more important, actually. Um, I like to know that I'm going to have land without having to spend mana on Life in the Loam for turn three, you know, spin your two, Life in the Loam, get something back, and then play a land, so that then you go off on turn four. I'd rather just be able to do that on turn three, if possible. Uh, so, in order to play some disruption, we have Lightning Axe. <laughs> so, it is a one mana discard outlet that deals five damage to target creature. And as you probably are aware, five is a really crucial number in this format. Right now, five is incredible. Uh, it's Tassiger, Gurmog Angler, Siege Rhino, Tarmogoyf. Five is the number to be. Now, granted, you will see Worm Coil Engine. You'll occasionally see um, a Tarmogoyf that just gets that one point bigger. Um, you know, what's a, a, a Grave Titan every now or a Sun Titan? But those are few and far between. Five is the number. That's why Dismember is so good, after all. Well, one reason why. It's also a one mana snuff out that any color can play. Uh, Lightning Axe also lets us have another way to get a creature in our graveyard on turn one. Alright, now we already see our Crypt of Agadim. What else do we have? Now, the lands are not finished. Um, I apologize for that. I will, I will leave my comments at saying what I would change. But for right now, this is how I have it constructed. I have four wooded foothills. These are good. I would definitely keep these. Oh, look at that shiny, the, the Judge promo, and then the the three regular ones. Yeah, nice and shiny. Uh, why Wooded Foothills? Now these are my only fetch lands. Why these specifically? Uh, because red and green are the two most important colors to get. And there's, there's actually a number of reasons for this. For one thing, we're already playing what effectively amount to four swamps 
although they come in tapped. We already have four black sources right here. Uh, so we don't need all that many more black sources. Um, we're also not generally casting our spells that have black in the mana cost unless we're paying 7 or 10 mana for them. Uh, Golgari Grave Troll is green. If we're casting Stinkweed Imp, that's okay, but we'd rather not. Uh, Street Wraith, Vengeful Pharaoh, Necroplasm, and Shambling Shell, maybe. They actually matter for it. But we do have some black duels in here. What's more important, though, is getting red and green. Red so that you can use Faithless Looting and Lightning Axe on turn one, and green so that you can cast Life from the Loam or a Golgari Grave Troll. Now, for basics, let's get to those first, I suppose. I have a single forest and a single mountain. One of the issues that I had, and it's the Georgia O'Keeffe Mountain. No, it's not actually by George O'Keeffe, of course. It's Noah Bradley, but uh, just, just look at that art a little bit. Some of you are snickering. I'll let you stop. Are we good? Okay. Um, one of the issues that I had with the last version of this deck is that it did not have any basics at all, and fortunately for me this week, I came across no Path to Exile or Blood Moon decks. Now, I can play through Path to Exile very, 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 very easily, but I still want to be able to get some value out of it. Uh, <laughs> Blood Moon, on the other hand, is a little bit trickier. Just a lot. And to be honest, in this particular, or in the games that you saw me play this week, I was just banking on not coming across Blood Moon. I was intentionally not prepared for it. There are ways to go about doing it. You can splash white for Ray of Revelation, or just assume that it'll be in your graveyard. Um, Ray of Revelation's flashback cost is just green, um, so get out your forest and then if they drop Blood Moon, flash it back and go for it. Uh, but maybe keep one uh, Sacred Foundry in the main board just in case. Um, hardly matters though if there's already a Blood Moon. That Sacred Foundry is not making white. You, you, you see my point. It's a tricky card to play around. Uh, there are other ways to do it. Chromatic Lantern, um, Seal of Primordium. They're just nature's claim. <laughs> they are they aren't all that all that great. Um, you just sort of have to hope that you dodge them uh, to a large extent. That being the case, you could have a swamp in here. Um, swamp isn't all that great, despite needing so much black mana, because you also need black, black, black to flash back Army of the Damned. Having a swamp would let you play your uh, black creatures, or your black creatures, Sands, Necroplasm, Street Wraith, Phantasmicorian, and Vengeful Bear. You see the problem there. But it would let you flash back Spider Spawning, so maybe there's an argument to be made for having a basic swamp. Um, maybe. But Mountain and Forest are the two most important ones. And Forest to play around the Blood Moon. Uh, now, I have two Stomping Grounds. Again, we want to have red and green, because we like being able to cast turn one Faithless Looting or Lightning Axe, or turn two Life in the Loam. We have two Blood Crypts. The red is more important than the green here. Uh, the turn one play here is more important. Um, and having some black, I think, is still important in case we need to go on the beatdown plan, or in case we do need some black mana uh, just to stall for a little while with Stinkweed Imp, or Shambling Shell, Block, Sacrifice, you know. That could give us something that we could do. Oh man, if damage were still on the stack, that would be crazy. Alright. Now, here's something that I would change. We're getting into I would change this territory. Um, next, I have a single Grove of the Burn Willows, which would definitely be more Groves of the Burn Willows, without a doubt. Um, I... Would I, I could have more stomping grounds. I actually don't own any. I had to borrow a, one of my stomping one of the stomping grounds in here uh, for this weekend, and this is the only grove I own. Ideally, it'd be uh, one one two two four. No, not Copperline Gorge. No, not more stomping grounds. We're already taking a fair amount of damage as it is. Perhaps you could do one more stomping ground because you're uh, kept using life from the loam, getting back wooded foothills. You want to have more targets, perhaps. Um, but you also want to be able, I would submit, uh, to have it come in untapped at any time and give you both of those colors, ideally without you losing life. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't matter if it's Grove of the Burned Willows or Copperline Gorge, because, again, three mana is the number that matters. 
just to be able to activate cryptobagadine. Sometimes you need a bit more than that. I'm talking about you, Golgari Grave Troll. Sometimes when you get to turn 5, if you have a copper line gorge, uh, it'll come in tapped and you won't, you'll miss a turn with Golgari Grave Troll. Um, yeah, that's uh, sometimes, that's corner case to be sure, but I think that that makes Grove better uh, than even a copper line gorge. Uh, so I would make this 4, and in exchange, and I'm just hating on black today. Uh, I would get rid of three of these black cleave cliffs. Uh, I would keep in one, to be sure. It is still fast mana, and it is still black, and I want to have a, a certain number of black sources. But again, green and red are more important. Um, so three of these would be Grove of the Burn Willows, or barring that, Copper Line Gorge. If you're on a budget, by all means, <laughs> I am sort of stunned as to why they, they didn't print uh, a Grove of the Burn Willows again in Modern Masters 2, or Copper Line Gorge. Yeah, that was eligible, because that was Scars of Mirrodin block. Oh dear, I don't know. Anyway, that's uh, what these are for. And then, this one would totally not be in if I were running this deck again. This is a Dakmore Salvage. This is a Dredge Land. It's the Dredge Land. Comes in tapped, which is a big no-no, um, and makes black. And that's really it. The idea is that if I need a third land and don't have a life in the loam, I can dredge the salvage back. Um, that's very corner case, to be sure. Or if I just have one land out and I need another one to start flashing back life in the loam, it's slow. Uh, I don't think that it's worth it. I think it could be another black cleave or copper line or grove. One of those. It's only one color. It's not either of the colors that I primarily need. And I already have Life in the Loam to get my lands back. I don't need the dredge here too much. It's just not as worth it, I would say. Take that for whatever it's worth, but this is the one I would... I'll set it over here. It's definitely a cut. Definitely, definitely. It did very little for me. I think it might have come up once. If so, then there's a, a video down here. Uh, if not, then there is a picture of, like, a cat or something. Or Eva. There's a picture of Eva. <laughs> Hopefully, and you know what, no, never mind. If there is a pic a video, then now there's a picture of Eva, because she's so cute. Alright, so this is the main board. Uh, and then we go to sideboards. Now, since I'm dumping cards in my graveyard like it's no one's business, gee, I wonder what artifact hate I'm going to be running. <laughs> of course, four ancient grudges. Uh, because of the nature of this deck, I'm going to be seeing quite a few of these over the course of the game. It doesn't make Ravager that much easier to deal with. They can still pull off their tricks, um, but it's something that you can do, and it's something that's pretty readily available. You might get one in your opening hand, and if the game goes long enough, you'll find all four, and you can just deal with them. <laughs> you can deal with their big spells. Let them, let them have their Memnites and their Ornithopters. Uh, you just deal with the, the consequential cards, like Ink Moth Nexus, Cranial Plating, etc. Uh, so, there are these, and I'll set them over here. Well, let's do this. Actually, even better. Just take a second, and voila. Next, I have three Dark Blast which maybe should be two Dark Blast and a Flame Jab. It does occasionally come up, I suppose, that I'd rather have a Flame Jab. Usually, though, I'd say that Dark Blast is better. Minus one, minus one to a target creature and Dredge three, it's only one. Uh, secretly, this is actually minus two, minus two to a creature, um, because you play it during your upkeep, and then dredge it, and then play it again. So, this can absolutely be a minus two, minus two. Um, it's great against Infect, it's great against um, any other tech that relies on a bunch of 1-1s. One I'm just looking at Delver, Young Pyromancer, um, those really low to the ground decks. Again, you can use this to effectively be minus 2, minus 2, which means that you can actually use it on the burn creatures, although that is still 4 damage that Eidolon is dealing to you. Eidolon of Great Rebels. Uh, so be very careful about that, but I have locked Infect out with this card before, and it is... It is grueling to have to deal with. Um, but you need it because that deck is so fast. So fast. 
uh, and I'll be talking more about its matchups later. Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter plus Life from the Loam is already pretty crazy. Uh, as you probably know, moder pretty much every modern deck nowadays is running at least one basic land because of Path to Exile, and Blood Moon, and Ghost Quarter. But if you can keep using this over and over again, this becomes actual factual strip mine. And I have, I have closed out a game against an Amulet Bloom player, a Bloom Titan player. Uh, I, I suppose it wasn't actually closing it out, I locked him out. Um, by turning Ghost Quarter into Strip Mine and then just, you know, Life from the Loam over and over and over again. Alright, next we have the Anti Burn Package. We'll start off with one Gulgari Brown Scale. Whenever it's put into your hand from the graveyard, so every time you dredge it, you gain two life and dredge two. Now it is not a black creature, so you cannot use it for uh, Crypt of Agadim. But. F Two life every turn? That's not so bad. <laughs> That's not so bad at all. It doesn't cost you any mana to do that. It might cost you some mana to get it back into the graveyard. Um, and it does pay for itself with Street Wraith. Although, you are only getting two cards when you dredge it. It's just a little something extra. And it is another creature for spider spawning. More importantly, however, the card that makes burn decks cry. <laughs> no, to the bone. The main cost is the same as the flashback cost, it's two in green. You gain two life for each creature card in your graveyard. And boy, do we have creature cards. Let's see, that's 23, of, yes, 23. Oh, yeah, so uh, this is how you make them cry. Uh, I, I suppose it rather speaks for itself. In the context of this deck, Feed the Clan has nothing on us. It feels a little bit like what Soul Sisters tries to do, except instead of getting that life over the course of a long game, you're getting a ton of it all at once as a result of the game going on for, for a while. Uh, next we have Necroplasm. Another one, just to bring in against tokens. It's just a, another good value card against them. We don't need too much uh, because we can go and find Necroplasm uh, pretty easily by dredging a bunch of cards, so just, just two is fine. We should be able to find them. And now, <laughs> for what is unfortunately the only thing that I can really do against combo in this deck, I have three Raven's Crimes. This is quantity over quality. I don't get to pick the card out of their hand, I just make them discard, and it has Retrace which means that I can pretty easily, once Life in the Loam is out, pretty easily cast this over and over again every turn. Um, it's, it's certainly very nice, uh, if you can make it long enough in the game. It is slow, it doesn't target, uh, it doesn't take out a specific card, so there is that, and they can drop unnecessary cards as a result. Uh, importantly though, you can target yourself, of course, so if you need to drop a Golgari Grave Troll or a Phantasmagorian in, by all means do so. This rewards you for getting to a late enough state in the game where you can start making them discard so many cards that the combo deck can't go off. Um, so for example, it, it lets you stall, say the, uh, what's a good example, the Ad Nauseam player. Even if you're not making them discard um, Ad Nauseam, or Angel's Grace, you're making them discard, say, lands. That slows them down, potentially. Um, just makes the game go on for long enough that you can start hitting them over and over and over with Raven's Crime. Um, it's really not much. This deck doesn't do very well against combo. Which brings me to my final analysis. <laughs> or, after having played with this deck for two weeks, um, very, actually they weren't very close to each other, they were months apart, but I would submit to you that, like any modern dredge deck, or any dredge deck in general, your best matches are going to be against the control decks. You will want to find any deck that's running uh, four remands, four cryptic commands, any of those decks. It may sound counterintuitive, but the reason is because you can easily overwhelm them. You can overwhelm their counter spells without a, without a problem. Even though remands uh, will make you still lose the flashback card, it won't come back to your hand. You know, turn one. Okay, I'll 
Try for an army of the damned. Oh, you countered that? Okay. I'll try for army of the damned. Okay. I'll try for another army of the damned. I'll try spider spawning. I'll try spider spawning. I'll dredge Golgari Grave Troll and cast it. I'll dredge... You can keep doing this over and over. They're going to eventually run out of counter spells. And when they do, you have the, you have the big guns. This basically means that in, against control decks, you, not they, you are the inevitable deck. And moreover, your win condition tends to be more explosive. We're talking 13 2 2 zombies. We're talking a bunch of spiders that can block reach creatures, or that have reach, so block flying creatures like Colonnade or Restoration Angel, so on and so forth. You have a giant Golgari Grave Troll. Uh, the, the biggest I think that I've gotten it is a 16 16. Good grief. Yeah, when you reach that stage in the game, well, anyway, um, what you really don't want to come across is combo, especially creatureless combo, because even then your lightning axes don't work, your necroplasms don't work, um, so something like ad nauseum, you really can't do much against them. Uh, Pyromancer's Ascension, you really can't do much against them. Uh, unfortunately, those matches are very, very difficult for you. The fast, uninteractive combo decks that are just trying to do their thing as quickly as they can, uh, you will try to avoid those as best you can. Uh, and if not, well, you know, <laughs> what can you do, I suppose? Um, you do have some sideboard answers. Uh, it might be the case that you can get, it may not happen, but Knot of the Bone can give you so much life that you can get out of reach of the Storm player. Um, you can get out of reach of the Scape Shift player on seven lands, or is it, yeah, I think it's, is it six or seven? And then the next one requires 36. Anyway, um, yeah, you you might be able to just gain enough life to get outside of those, um, but <laughs> there's not much. There's not much you can do. There's sideways answers. Uh, Ancient Grudge, I find, is very strong against the uh, the decks that are running. Um, like if you come across Lantern Control, LSV was showing that off not long ago have Ancient Grudge, you're already dropping stuff in your graveyard anyway. Actually, that that's maybe the kind of combo control... It's not really a combo. It's a lock deck. It's a prison deck. What's a better example? Um, Affinity feels like a combo deck at some points, um, but your sideways answers to that include Ancient Grudge. Um, in between are the aggro decks and the mid-range decks. The lower to the ground the aggro deck is, the harder it's going to be for you to beat them. I'm talking burn, I'm talking infect, I'm talking zoo. If it's especially, if it's getting out creatures very early on and consistently, uh, you're going to have a hard time with them. Uh, th there's not much that you can do about it. You can kill something with lightning axe, uh, you will be taking some damage with street wraith, with your fetch lands, with shocking, um, and you won't be doing much to develop your board until you're popping out uh, zombies or spiders or a Golgari Grave Troll. It's important to note, I would submit, remember, Army of the Damned, the zombies come in tapped. Spider spawning, they do not come in tapped. Occasionally that extra turn makes a difference. Uh, if you absolutely need to have creatures to block, spider spawning. If you're looking to win and you think you can do it on the next turn, Army of the Damned. Uh, usually that's lethal, it's 26 power after all. Um, mid-range decks, especially ones with Liliana of the Veil, are actually better for you. Uh, they give you more time to develop, you don't care about their hand attack, you, you might actually like it, depending on what's going on with your hand. They're, with the exception of Lightning Axe, and that's about it. There isn't really anything that you don't want in your graveyard. Uh, it's okay if a land gets... well, they're not thought-seizing or inquisitioning a land, so they don't count. Um, and actually, Inquisition doesn't have all that many targets in your deck. Um, but everything else, you can do something with it when it hits the graveyard. Uh, so, Hand Attack is bad against you. Liliana is bad against you. If anything, you might actually get some value out of it. Thank you, I wanted that dredger in the graveyard. I've, I've been meaning to try to do something with it. Oh, you want to edict me? I have... 13 creatures, now I have 12. Yeah, Liliana doesn't do very much. Um, granted, it does mean that you're going on the Golgari Grave Troll only plan won't be all that great. Um, 
But at least you can force her to edict a creature that can come back next turn anyway. Um, the bigger creatures that they have just come out so slowly that you might actually already have a pretty developed game plan by the time that they get out their Siege Rhino or their Tassiger or Gurmog Angler, something as such. Uh, Tarmogoyf you do have to worry about. Uh, it will be a 4-5. Pretty, let's see, I'm looking at creature, instant sorcery, land. Yeah, it will be a 4-5 just about all the time, uh, because you're dredging so readily. With the exception of Tarmogoyf, though, you can, and again, Tarmogoyf is a low-to-the-ground creature. It doesn't feel like the rest of what Midrange is doing. Uh, you, can, you can do pretty well. Uh, Splinter Twin is, to the extent that they're a combo deck, bad. To the extent that they're a tempo or a control deck, good. But because they have that combo backup plan, uh, a pilot who knows what they're doing realizes that they only have to play around one card, and that's name, that is named Lightning Axe. Um, occasionally Dark Blast if they try to go off with a Pester Might. Not much. Um, and that's really about it. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this deck tech. Um, again, my changes that I would make if I were to run this again, and if I had the resources to have these other cards, uh, more Grove of the Burn Willows, drop Dakmore Salvage uh, off a cliff, uh, or just back into your trade binder. Someone will want it. And that's really about it. Um, let's see, maybe one more stomping ground so that you can have something else to get with uh, Wooded Foothills that you're bringing back with Life from the Loam. Maybe. Phantasmagorian is an all star, but I think that one is fine. Uh, Vengeful Pharaoh to fight aggro. If you disagree with any of the numbers of my creatures, especially like Shambling Shell, for instance, maybe maybe that's too many Shambling Shells, um, then feel free to leave a comment. Uh, there are 19 black creatures and 23 creatures overall. Remember, only black creatures count for Crypt of Agadim, but all creatures count for Spider Spawning. And feel free to have lots of fun. If you expect a control-heavy meta or uh, mid-range decks, Go crazy to your heart's content, and uh, hope for those uh, Lilianas and Coligons commands to make you discard what you want. And there you go. Take care, YouTube. I will see you later.